Hi, I'm Matt Storm. I am a photo-based artist in Washington, D.C., um, but my art includes photography, installation, sculptures, uh, and sometimes performances. Um, and I've been in D.C. for a little over three years now, um, and I went to college up in New Hampshire, so I've been down to Somerville uh, a lot during that time. Um, DC is actually a pretty great place to live. Um, I think it took me a while to uh, get more involved in the community there, but um, DC especially has a really vibrant and strong and close-knit transgender community. Um, so I, I spend a lot of time uh, with the transgender community. I'm transgender, and I really don't think I could find a community that well, um, or sorry, that, that works that well uh, somewhere else. Yeah, so I started making art. I mean, as a kid, I was always tinkering with things, you know, taking bikes apart, uh, putting the parts back together. I made some, you know, cart you could pull out of a bicycle, um, you know, making little sculptures or uh, drawing on, you know, drawing on everything. Um, but I don't know if I ever really thought of it as art. It was more just something I did. Um, and then in college, I took my first art class. Uh, I guess I actually I took a drawing class in high school. I had a sketchbook all of high school. I made comics and different um, sort of narrative drawings where there was a character and maybe some dialogue um, because I really felt like it was a better way to express my ideas uh, than just talking about them. Um, so I really got hooked on that, I guess, yeah, 15, 16 years old. Uh, and I also built sets for um, the theater department. Uh, I really love just kind of constructing things out of nothing and uh, them being places where something could happen. Um, and then in college, I took a more formal art class for the first time, um, and that was a big, a big challenge for me, the idea that Art had to stand up to an audience. Um, it had to contain everything it needed to communicate something. I couldn't stand next to it and explain it. Um, so that was a, a real challenge for me, and I ultimately ended up loving photography. Uh, I love the challenge of starting with something r real in the real world, a person um, or a place or something happening and having to use the camera to add my own meaning or perspective to it. Uh, I like that challenge more than starting from scratch. So in my sculptures, um, including the ones at the Somerville Media Center during June, um, that series, all of the clothing is real clothing that started in the real world that someone wore, That in this case that I wore or I wear. Um, and I am more interested in starting with these uh, pieces of the real world rather than um, sitting with a sewing machine if I made all the shirts myself. Um, so for me, art is really a, a way to take something in the real world that's happening that exists in some way and uh, add my own meaning and perspective and make sure that the end product is something that represents itself well to a viewer and an audience and that someone can see it and understand something about it or come away with an emotion or a feeling that uh, they wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, so I should start with saying the sculptures are all sculptures of my chest. Um, I'm transgender. I grew up as a, a girl and a woman and transitioned to living uh, generally as a, a man. Um, now and being interpreted as a masculine person and when people see me and maybe get get some hint that I wasn't uh, maybe born a man or I, I look transgender in some way uh, immediately their eyes go from my face to my chest to my face to my chest and they're trying to figure out you know who I am or, or make sense of me um, and this isn't everybody but it, it happens so frequently you know maybe I uh, buy gum at the convenience store and I use my credit card and it has my name on it, which is a 
traditionally girl name because my, my legal name is still an old name the, that is a girl name. Uh, it's not Matt. So when, when someone realizes that, they start you know looking at me and looking at my chest. Um, and I, I think this is a common experience for a lot of masculine transgender people, a lot of people who have transitioned to living as men. Um, and or even people who uh, might identify as being a woman but are more uh, masculine in their presentation and their appearance and how they dress. Um, so this experience of having one's chest stared at uh, can be intrusive and can be uncomfortable. Um, and also, uh, I and I believe a lot of other masculine transgender people um, struggle with their own relationships to their chest. Um, you know, sometimes I like mine, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I have much more complicated feelings about it. A lot of people get uh, chest surgery. So this comp complicated relationship with my chest and complicated relationship with the public to my chest is something I wanted to explore in this art piece. Um, so in this case, I made a number of replicas, I guess 10 replicas, eight of which are uh, up at the Somerville Media Center, um, these replicas of my chest, uh, the shape of it, the slight curve of it, and I put um, shirts on them that are shirts that I wear uh, to show just what my chest looks like in public. And the chests are hung on the wall at a height where if you're in the room, you, you have to see them. You can't not see them. So the chests are in charge of being seen instead of the person being in charge of staring at them. So it really turns the experience around and, and puts the chest as a um, center of this viewer experience uh, and really lets the chest just be on their own. They're not connected to me, they're not connected to who I am or how someone feels about me or their opinion about transgender people or anything. You know, they're not connected to what kind of day I'm having that day. They're just themselves um, on the wall uh, there to interact with the viewer and to provide a space for each other. And the shirts that are on the chests. They're all shirts that I wore. I you know, went through my closet and thought about what shirts would look good on the wall on these sculptures, what would provide a good range. Uh, so one of them is a stretchy athletic shirt. This is being at the gym. Uh, so a viewer might, might see that shirt and think about what is it like to have this chest or this identity or this experience at a gym or in a locker room. Uh, another one is more formal. It has a tie. It suggests you know, maybe a, a wedding or a funeral or a formal workplace event or a graduation, you know, a moment of bigger significance. You know, what is it like to, to be in that situation? Some of them are casual at home clothing, you know, uh, button down short sleeve shirts with stripes on them or t-shirts or flannels. Um, and I, I also wanted to pick a range of shirts that, uh, masculine of center people, masculine transgender people, butch people, um, uh, people who identify as studs, who, uh, anyone who identifies on that spectrum, shirts that uh, those people might recognize as part of their own wardrobe or part of the wardrobe of their friends and community. So some of the ones, the, uh, the plaid shirt, the black shirt with these kind of gray shoulder patches, the blue denim shirt, these are all uh, shirts that you know, I, I recognize that, you know, my, my friends wear and uh, masculine, um, masculine of center people in my community wear. Uh, and they're also a way for me to pay homage, to, to pay respects to all of the really strong masculine transgender people and, and butch people who have come before me. Um, the white V-neck tee especially, but white V-neck t-shirt uh, as kind of an, an icon of this this older era of butch people and masculine of center people who have really made it possible for me to be in the world this way. Yeah, um, the shirts, uh, no, they weren't ones I wanted to let go of. I um, and I've I've had this sculpture series for a little over a year now, so I changed out a couple of the shirts. Um, just to make the colors match better or to have the shirts be a little bit closer to the idea that I want them to be. And they're definitely, they're definitely shirts I miss wearing. Uh, I keep going to my closet and I'm like, you know, where's, you know, where, where's my blue tie? <laughs> what am I going to wear? Uh, where's my, where's my bow tie? And bow ties are such a classic, uh, 
trans masculine and, and butch uh, icon that, yeah, I really miss my red bow tie. <laughs> Yeah, um, currently I'm working on, I always work on a couple different projects at a time. I, it's pretty rare I buckle down and I just have a single project that I'm interested in. So right now uh, I have two main photo series I'm working on. One is a series where um, it's about my relationship to my family. Um, in the current photos I'm working on, I'm spending uh, time with my grandmother, who's much older, uh, who lives in North Carolina. So I go down and visit her and uh, take photos of me in her house, take photos of us. I think um, I think there are a lot of narratives about how transgender people spend time with their family and relate to their families, but or there there are a lot of truths. There's a lot of different stories there but there's not necessarily visualizations for all those stories. Um, you know, what, what does it look like for my older conservative grandmother to have a transgender grandson who goes and visits her and we spend time together and, you know, I make her a Manhattan and clean out her bird bath and what, is, what does that look like? Um, and it's, it's part of a larger series of photos I've been doing with my family. Um, one set of them I actually dressed up as my grandfather who is uh, extremely conservative. I Shortly after he passed away last year, I um, kept his clothing and dressed up in it and took photos of myself in his house and his clothing, doing his things, things like you know studying the stock market at his desk and things that I wouldn't personally typically do. Um, so this is part of this larger family project and envisioning what uh, my relationships with people in my family are. So that's one project. The other project is taking pictures of my body in the studio, so just in a um, pretty empty art studio, you know, plain walls, plain floor, natural light, uh, so there's really nothing else going on, and it's about um, seeing my body, and uh, I think a lot of times people have trouble seeing things they don't already know how to see or haven't already seen, uh, so if... I think I'm trying to make a, a new vocabulary, a wider, wider vocabulary for looking at bodies. And my personal contribution to that is uh, photos of my own body and my own experience with it. And, well, I think one thing really powerful about art and, and why I'm drawn to it is with some other forms of communication, you can show people something or you can tell people your opinion about something, uh, maybe in, in writing, for example. Um, and something I love about visual art is the ability to, s the, the challenge of saying, how can I make an experience where someone can walk into the room with the art and not just see it, but suddenly start to feel about it and um, since art isn't directive, it doesn't say, usually it doesn't say, stand in front of this and look at it this way and feel this about it. Uh, and there's no, not necessarily a, a soundtrack in the background saying the emotional tone here is uh, violins or the emotional tone is, you know, loud metal music or something. Um, it really gives the viewer the experience to both confront the uh, specific experience of the artist and the material there, but also the viewer can have their own experience with it and their own relationship to it. Um, something about my own art, since I am transgender and so much of my art is about transgender topics, I know that since so many people are not transgender or might not even know someone transgender, they might see my art and immediately think, you know, this is so far away from me. This is not something that I encounter in my daily life. Um, and sometimes I think that uh, ability to feel distant from something uh, almost makes it feel safer to explore. Uh, if my art and the topics in it feel in a totally different world to a viewer who might not have seen it before, I, I hope that encountering it as art lets them start thinking about these ideas, maybe start uh, thinking about what it's like to be transgender or even relate to it in their own way. So many people relate to not fitting in or not feeling normal or not, you know, feeling like everything in their life and who they are really matches up with whatever they feel society says they're supposed to be. So what I love about art is the ability to have my experience over here on one wall and the viewer over here and 
uh, to really let them and their own curiosity bridge that um, bridge that gap and figure out how, how they relate to it and what uh, what parts of it make sense for them. So I'm um, I'm actually I got off the ferry uh, this early afternoon from Provincetown. There's a ferry from Provincetown at the very tip of Cape Cod. So if uh, if Cape Cod is kind of where Boston's over here, and then Cape Cod kind of comes up here, Provincetown is way at the tip. So you can actually take a ferry from Provincetown over to Boston over here. Uh, it's about an hour and a half long, and. Um, in Provincetown, there's a very vibrant arts community, uh, sort of like how Somerville has such a strong arts community within Boston. Um, but in Provincetown, it's you know so much of the town. And I've been at an art residency there, where as an artist, all you have to do is be there. Um, there's no time you have to get up. There's no activity you have to participate in. You can just get up and go right to your studio. Um, for me, I just get up and I go take some photos. I might take a break, go, you know, walk along the beach, eat lunch, go back, make some more photographs, uh, review my photographs in the afternoon. And it's really amazing to just spend that much time with my own work. Uh, most artists, myself included, are so busy. Almost all of us have other jobs and other responsibilities. Um, so to be able to take even a few days um, just to give my art some of the time it deserves. Uh, that's been great. So I read plenty of art books and I also uh, read about gender and about social movements, about social justice. I'm interested in all of those topics, but to be honest, I also read a lot about business and about marketing. Um, I think uh, something I really respect about business and about marketing is this idea of a consumer and a product. And the product has to be specialized to the consumer and really fit them and appeal to them. You know, when you have a, a product like Coke, it fits the need of a consumer that wants to taste something delicious and cold like Coke and maybe doesn't care that it's not necessarily the most healthy product. And Coke has this great, you know, brand. It's bright red. Uh, we associate it with that it just comes in a can and you open it and no matter what it tastes like Coke, it's so reliable. Um, so I love reading about marketing and business because when you turn that around and apply it to art, it's really this idea of I, as the artist, am not the most important person in the world. It's not just about my ideas in a vacuum. It's really about how can I make art as an experience that uh, serves a viewer, that makes them feel community, that makes them feel a new emotion, that makes them feel something that maybe they've been avoiding or didn't know how to feel or didn't have space to have in themselves or see reflected somewhere else in the world. And um, that challenge of how can I build my product, my art, and how I write about it, and how my website looks, and how it hangs on the wall, how can I make that experience uh, line up with the viewer um, who I have this responsibility to serve. So I, uh, I really do learn a lot from um, reading about topics other than art and how to, how to really solve that problem.